Day 673. Today there are a lot of updates from the Kupyansk direction. Here Russian forces continue trying to penetrate Ukrainian defenses all the way to Petropavlivka in order to collapse the eastern flank and officially start the battle for Kupyansk. The toughest clashes, therefore, are taking place around Sinkivka. Today Russian forces launched a powerful attack on the northern part of Sinkivka. As you remember, last time I told you that Ukrainians conducted a successful counterattack and eliminated the Russian foothold in the northern part of the settlement, so the Russians needed to start all over again. Prior to conducting a mechanized assault, Russian forces launched an extensive artillery preparation with multiple launch rocket systems. By the end, Russians also started deploying smoke screens in front of select Ukrainian positions to obstruct the view and prevent crossfire. This is when Ukrainian reconnaissance drone operators understood that it was time to go and search for the Russian assault units. Russian forces use pretty much the same road every time, so there is a lot of destroyed equipment along the way. Finally, the movement was detected near Leman Pershi, which Russians use as a jump pad for assault in Sinkivka. In the meantime, Ukrainian artillery crews started gradually preparing to face Russian forces by shelling the expected line of advancement and correcting the fire. This ensures that by the time the Russians reached the fire pocket, the Ukrainian artillery systems had already corrected their aim and have their guns pointed precisely on the road. And you will see soon that this approach paid off. The assault unit consisted of two tanks, three armored fighting vehicles and around 50 troops. The first tank in line had mine clearing equipment to ensure that the assault unit reached the settlement. That is why it became the target of the highest priority. As the Russian assault unit got close, Ukrainian assault drone operators attempted to hit the tank. Even though the first drone reached the target, the tank did not sustain any critical damage and continued to move forward. Ironically, the mine clearing tank was neutralized by a mine. The tank was not destroyed, but it was successfully immobilized before the Russians managed to reach Ukrainian positions. The rest of the vehicles got closer, and it seems like they did not know what to do, because they just moved back and forth for some time, until the Ukrainian ATGM crew on purpose hit the last vehicle in the column. So the destroyed tank at the front blocked the way forward, while the destroyed armored fighting vehicle in the back blocked the way back, effectively trapping the remnants of the assault unit. The infantry realized that the vehicles became an easy target and ran towards the trenches in the tree lines to hide from artillery fire. Shortly, the second armored fighting vehicle was damaged by a Ukrainian artillery shell. The tank crew understood that they were next and decided to take a risk and move around the destroyed vehicle through the minefield. Unfortunately for the Russian crew, they immediately exploded on a mine. The damaged by artillery armored fighting vehicle was somehow still moving tried to move around as well, and faced the same consequences. Finally, the unexplainable happens. The fifth armored fighting vehicle that we saw at the beginning emerged from the forest. The reason why they got so delayed or lost in the forest is unknown, as initially they were all moving together. But what is even crazier is that the driver of the armored fighting vehicle decided to proceed with the assault alone, moved around the damaged mine clearing tank, and unsurprisingly, immediately exploded on a mine. The infantry that was sitting on top of the vehicle promptly ran towards the trenches to hide from artillery fire. Unfortunately for Russians, Ukrainians deployed grenade-dropping drones to finish the personnel that survived. The graphic footage released by the Ukrainian fighters from the 14th Brigade showed trenches full of corpses. Overall, the Russian assault went terribly wrong. Due to the density of mines, deploying only one tank with mine clearing equipment was a mistake. The smoke screens also proved to be ineffective, as Ukrainians managed to destroy the last vehicle in the column and trap the whole assault unit in the middle of the minefield. In total, Russian forces lost 5 tanks and armored fighting vehicles, and 40 soldiers were killed and wounded. As the holiday season continues, we extended the sale on our dual flag collection. Right now, you can get them at substantial 20-30% discounts. If you would like to show your solidarity and support my work, now is the best time to make a purchase. I wish all of you peaceful holidays, and I will see you in the next report.